never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Yeah. I can't believe this, suddenly I'm not with no creation. All I ever did is pass the way this pop my transgressions. Silver and gold. And they asked me if I could minister to them since they hadn't gone since they had not gone to church. And uh, they asked me if I could minister to them. And I thought, well, wow, that's a lovely opportunity. Why not? Why why not minister to them? So I minister I began to minister to them. And as I as I was ministering to them, I literally spoke to them on the things that I had taught. You know, like during Sunday, last Sunday, because I taught on prayer, but when I was ministering to them, I focused on 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 the three levels of prayer. So I began to speak to them on the three levels of prayer, and when I was done speaking to them on the three levels of prayer, I asked them if they wanted to give their lives to Jesus. It was amazing. It was amazing. The three people said, "Yes, I want to give my life to Jesus. Yes, I want to give my life to Jesus." And the three people gave their lives to Christ. I took their phone numbers. I've been sending them those daily messages that I write, which is which is really amazing. And um, I was hoping to see them here today. I'll do a follow up on them again today. Today the weather was really really cold, isn't it? <laughs> and us making it, I just know that it is God who has allowed us to be here. Even I, I remember Chris. I spoke to Crystal yesterday. She said she was coming. I even did a home visit. Uh, she said she was coming with the kids, but she's not here as yet. Or maybe she's not going to make it. I don't know what could be the challenge. But a lot of people want to be in the house of God that I know for a fact. But they're always adamant. They're always things that stand in the way. So it was amazing when the, when the three people gave their lives to Jesus. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to do a recap. I'm going to do a recap on the things that I spoke about last, uh, last Sunday. You know, for the benefit of the, of the four <laughs> that are here today <laughs> that, weren't, that weren't there last Sunday as well as to also remind ourselves those who were there and uh, and then from there i will then minister on that which uh, i intend to minister on today so what i'll just do is i'll speak to us from maybe maybe i'll just i'll just do the three levels of prayer i've spoken a lot of things uh, mainly on what you know giving us definitions of what prayer is and and stuff uh, but i'll just do a recap but i'll concentrate on the three levels of okay. the three levels of prayer so we can we can take our sets. Praise God, Amen. amen. Praise God, Amen. amen. Mm. Okay, so, uh, okay, maybe maybe let's make some declarations. Somebody say, no weapon, no weapon. No weapon. Fashioned, against fashioned against me will prosper. Will prosper. No, weapon no weapon fashioned against my family, against against my family, family. that will prosper. will prosper. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We are covered. We are protected. We are protected. Jehovah, fights Jehovah fights on our behalf. I will not lack anything. I will not lack anything. Because Jehovah is my provider. I am provided for. I am taken care of. I am healthy. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. We need, to, we, need to, we need to always constantly do that in our own personal lives. When you wake up in the morning, make some declarations. Yeah. Tell yourself that I am covered. Tell yourself that I am protected. Mm. Tell yourself that no harm will come near me. Amen. Tell yourself that no harm will come near you. Amen. Mm. And tell yourself, tell yourself, even in a scenario where you know for a fact that you don't even have money, and you tell yourself that I am protected, I yeah. am covered. Mm. Uh, I will not lack anything. Amen. I will not lack anything. The Lord is my provider. I shall not want. Amen. I will not want anything I'm provided for. So let us, uh, let us always pray and make such declarations in our own personal lives, even on a daily basis, as an, aff as an affirmation of what the Lord is doing in our lives. So as I'm speaking on the three levels of prayer, which is a recap of the, of the message that I ministered on last Sunday, uh, the first level, which would be the lowest level of prayer, and this is, uh, you know, spoken only by lips. You know, there are prayers that people speak and they only speak them with their lips and they don't mean them. And in most cases, prayers that are spoken just by lips could just be recited prayers, could just be prayers that people recite, you know. And, and that's the lowest level of prayer. 
Or it could just be a prayer that you just have to say simply because you have been asked to pray. You know, and it's, it's not coming from deep within you. It's just something that you have to do. Like, you know, I, I remember this, this one time, this young man um, contacted me and, and, you know, he was just, you know, after which the president committed the nation uh, to God, to God, you know. So this young man contacts me and, and he asks me, what do you think about that which uh, the president has done? He has committed the nation into the hands of God. But the question is, did the president really commit the nation <laughs> into the hands of God? Because I can, I can stand and just speak and say I am committing the nation into the hands of God. And it can just be leap service. And it can be because I know that's what you want, to, that's what I, you want to hear. <laughs> and then I will speak, not necessarily because I have done it, but simply because that's what they want me to do. You know, I'm the president, but I have to please the people. You know? I have to please the people. So I will do things, but then the only way the nation will ever know that I've actually given the nation to God is through my behavior, is through my actions, is through the things that I do. You see, if people are still being tormented and tortured for the, because, for the reasons of fear, <laughs> which I have placed in the people and I've kept the people in fear, and then afterwards I've said, I've given the nation to God. I don't think I have really given the nation to God. As long as there is fear going on in my name, fear being propagated in my name. Because they'll tell you that's what the president said, isn't it? Like we're, we, we're just enforcing the words of the president. We are following the orders from the president. But then I thought the president gave the nation to God. Why are we still operating in fear, <laughs> you know? And why, why are we taking money from people in the name of the president who gave the nation to God? So maybe that's when you then realize, no, that was probably just leap service. The nation wasn't really given to God. Maybe it was. I'm just being, I don't know. But you only know whether a nation has been given to God through the behavior of the person. In the very same manner, a person can be in church praying and making declarations, speaking about how great and how wonderful God is. And as they are walking out of the church, they are talking about how hard and difficult life is. Mm. But I thought, you serve a great God. You know, why are you not worship? Why are you not declaring the goodness of God? Why are you not worshiping God? You know? Why, why don't you continue in the same attitude? Same attitude of worship and same attitude of confidence that God is great. God will take care of every one of my needs. You know, God will take care of everything that I'll ever need in this life. Why don't you continue in the very same attitude? Why do you have to then begin to operate and function in fear? Fear is not of God. So whenever you find yourself that you speak about how great God is, but then when, when a little thing happens, there you are, you're throwing tantrums, you know, you need to then check and find out, am I really really operating from a place of confidence in God or I'm operating from a place of fear of what the enemy can possibly do in my in my life so that's the first level and the scripture right there is uh, is in Isaiah Isaiah 29 verse 18 it says wherefore the Lord said for as much as this person draw near me with their mouth and their lips do honor me, um, but have uh, okay. Do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. Like they do honor God, but they have moved their heart far away from God. People can honor God with their lips, <laughs> and their hearts are so far away from God. You can just make a you can just make a public appearance. <laughs> You know, just for the sake of the public, you know, just for the people to think that, you know, this person is with God. Just like, just like with the Pharisees in the Bible, you know, the Pharisees, these were the people of the law. And these are the people that knew the Bible and would speak the Bible, but they were not close to God. I mean, the Pharisees were actually responsible for the death of Jesus. <laughs> you know, the people that claimed to fear and loved God. So people can be, can, can have that 
Pharisee spirit where they will speak about God but yet their hearts are so far away from God and refuse to be one of those people that only speak about God with their lips but their hearts are far away from God. Refuse that your heart be far away from God. So in this level of prayer, obviously a lot of people, the only thing that they do is um, they just worship God with their lips alone and yet their hearts are so far away from God. You know, it's, it's about, you know, they know the right thing, they know the right words to say, they know, the, they know exactly how to get, you, um, to, to get you to believe that they are saved and they are Christians and they are children of God, but they are not necessarily leaving the thing. And uh, I've, been, I've been corned a few times, you know, by people, you know, who, be, who, who will talk like they're Christians and behave like they're Christians. And uh, they'll tell you that, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to repent, I'm going to change, <laughs> I'm going to start serving God. And, you know, and, and you look at them and they, they look so sincere. <laughs> they look so sincere, you know, like you feel so sorry for them. And you want to do everything humanly possible to help them to become better people and do things differently. But they know deep down in their hearts that they're just calling you. You know, they know deep down in their hearts they're just telling you what you want to hear. <laughs> they know exactly what you want to hear, so they'll tell you what you want to hear. And uh, there are people that know what God wants to hear, so guess what they do? They tell God what God wants to hear. But God is not a man. God knows the heart. <laughs> so God is now saying, no, I, I know you. I know you. You're telling me what I want to hear. <laughs> You're telling me what I want to hear, but <laughs> your heart is not with me. Your heart is not with me. Your heart is not with me. So, so there's no loyalty. In, in, the, in level one of prayer. In level one of prayer, there is no loyalty. These people, they are not loyal. And, and these people, when they get an opportunity for some, an opportunity for a blessing from another source, which has nothing to do with God, they'll go for that. They'll go for that. It's more like, you know, we, there's that parable in, in, in the Bible. Uh, um, the parable of a king who is throwing a dinner uh, for his son's wedding and he invites people you know he invites people to come for this for this wedding and 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 some of the and so obviously when these people were invited though they knew they weren't going to attend they agreed because that's what the king wanted to yeah. hear yeah. They agreed that they were going to attend the wedding, which is the very same thing. You know, you talk, you talk to people about church. And they all agree that they're going to be there because they know that's what you want to yeah. hear. So in the very same manner, you know, th these people, they will tell you exactly what you want to hear. And so they told the king what the king wanted to hear. And when it was now the day for the thing, guess what? Guess what these people would then begin to say? They now have excuses. All of a sudden, someone wants to go and veal cows at night. I just bought cows and I need to go see my cows. I'm sorry I can't come for dinner. You, you want to go see cows at night? You can't come for dinner because you want to go see cows. And you want to see them at night. How are you going to see cows at night? And trust me, they didn't have electricity those days, right? Eh? How was he seeing cows at night? <laughs> And then another one says, I've just married a wife. Uh, I can't come for dinner. Tell me, which wife wouldn't want to go for a free dinner? Huh? And doesn't have to wash plates for that evening. Huh? Like, you know, I don't have to wash plates tonight. I don't need to cook. <laughs> I just got married and there's no cooking. I'm going for dinner by the king's, you know, palace. You know, I'm, go I'm going by the king's cabin, bruh. I mean, there's no need for me to cook dinner. <laughs> there's no need for me to cook dinner. The wife would have been really excited, but the husband says, no, I just met a wife, I can't come for dinner. But it, previously, he knew that that was the day he was going to marry his wife, mm -hmm. and, but then he told the king what the king wanted to hear, that I am going to be there. I'm going to attend, um, I'm going to attend the dinner. I'm going to be there. But that was nothing but just a lie. Telling the other person what the other person just wants to hear. And that's what a lot of people do. They'll tell you what 
you want to hear. So in this, in this level of prayer, what, what simply would have happened is that this person would not have surrendered everything to God. Their heart is not given to God. They have not submitted anything. Um, their trust, you know, they don't really trust God completely. They have not submitted themselves. They're not, bro they're not broken before God, you know. But so now this is what's happened. You have to open up yourself to the leading of God and do that which God is telling you to do. Open up yourself to the leading of God and do the things that God is telling you to do. Whatever the Lord speaks, find yourself doing it. If God spoke it, then be the one to do it. These are the things that God is speaking, so these are the things that I am doing. I am doing them because God is the one speaking these things. Thanks. So don't just agree with your words and with your lips and never do. Never do. It's every time you make a commitment, find yourself fulfilling that commitment. Every time you make a pledge, find yourself committing, um, making sure that pledge actually happens. You know, there, there are times, uh, the first Sunday, must have been the first Sunday, you know, the first Sunday during lockdown. Uh, obviously, I made a commitment that church will, church will open at nine. Church will open at uh, at nine o'clock, <laughs> and I was I was running late. You know, transport was bad. I couldn't find transport, but I needed to be here. And then the combi that I jumped into wasn't getting into town. It was dropping people by the flyover there. You know, coming from Ofakuse, and it was just like, what am I going to do? I'm I'm already late for church, and I told people that church starts. At nine, you know, at least even if there's nobody there, I have to be there at nine, nine because that's what I told people that I am going to do, right? Because I don't want anyone to come here and stand and then where's the pastor? So there I was, I had to make a huge sacrifice. The little money that I had, it's more like I, it's more like I then hired a combi from, from there to here. And you know how the guys would charge you really big, you know? But because I had made a commitment, I had to make a sacrifice. When a person makes a commitment, guess what they have to do? They have to make a sacrifice. When you commit, then you sacrifice. You, do, you don't just say, oh, I failed, I, I can't do it. You know, I, I made a commitment, but now I can't do it. Because this is your name on the line. It's your integrity. <laughs> you should be concerned about your name. One of the most precious things is your name. Like, for instance, if you, tell, if you agree and tell me something today and if you don't do it if you tell me that you're going to do it next time there's a possibility i'm not going to believe that you're going to do it you say practice what you preach practice what you preach <laughs> yeah so if you are going to speak it then make an effort to make sure that it happens if you're going to say something to god make sure that you live up to your commitment let it not just be a leap service let your heart be involved in it let your heart Engage in it. Whatever you commit to, do it. If you say you're going to do something, do it. The second level, which is the higher level of prayer, it is when your thoughts are fixated on the things of God. That's Colossians 3, verse 2. Colossians 3, verse 2. Set your affections on the things above and not on the things on the earth. Set your affections on the things above not on the things on the earth. You need to set your affections on the things that are above. So in this level of prayer, you are not concerned about the things that happen in the natural. You know that God has you covered and, he, and you are convinced um, that in the physical world, He is fighting all of your battles. You, you're convinced that you're covered and you're convinced that God is fighting every one of your battles. Trust me, when you know that God is the one that is fighting every one of your battles, you can't be worried about anything. You gotta like, you see, I'm one of those people who are just not worried about anything. There's some people that actually worry for me, worry on my behalf, but I personally, I'm not worried. Why? Simply because I know for a fact that God is fighting every one of my battles. And the enemy will present a situation to get me stressed and to get me worried. 
and you will be surprised that I'm smiling <laughs> in the face where I should be worrying. Simply because my focus is not on the things of this earth. My focus is on Jesus. So when you focus on God, you begin to see that God is actually bigger. And your situation is not any bigger than God. Amen. Amen. You realize that your situation is not any bigger than God when you focus on Him. So it is important. You need to make sure that you focus on God. When you focus on God, the enemy can't manipulate you into fear. You can't find yourself uh, fearful. Because you're being manipulated by the, by the enemy. Because that's what the enemy does. The enemy will manipulate you to get you scared. You know, there's this, there's this um, person who sent me a message on Facebook asking me, um, do, you pray, do you pray for people? And I was like, oh yeah, I, I pray for people. What's your prayer request? And, and then the person says, uh, no, it's not for me. It's for a friend of mine. And uh, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, what's the prayer request? You know. Why should I pray for your friend? Then she's like, oh, well, a lot of people, a lot of people are dream, she's sick, and a lot of people are dreaming of her dad. Obviously, if you dream of a person dad, and you tell them about it, that would just bring nothing but fear. Yeah. You get it? Even if the person was not going to die, <laughs> but already there's that fear, and that fear is gonna cause worry. <laughs> And that worry might result in the person eventually dying. That worry might result in the person eventually dying. So now what the enemy does is that, because you're not focused on the things that are above, he'll use things like this to get you scared. And then to, you know, and then to get you off guard. And then from there now he can strike, he can strike on you. So the enemy is looking for that moment of panic. He's looking for that moment of panic. But Pastor Pata, is fear really a bad thing? Because yes, fear is a bad thing. Because sometimes God, fear uh, helps us a lot. Because some people are scared that they, they go to hell. So, so they, they, they come to church. Okay. So is really fear a bad okay. thing? Okay. You shouldn't serve God because you're afraid of going to hell. Mm -hmm. You should serve God because you love Him. Never serve God because you're afraid of going to hell. That's why you realize that I'll never, I'll never preach a message to say, oh, if you don't serve God, you're going to go to hell. Because now you then end up the leap service Christian. You get it? You're now just doing a leap service and you're doing a public appearance in church. <laughs> like I'm, I'm just doing a public appearance. This is one of my good things that I do, my good deeds, you know, such that I don't go to hell. Trust me, people don't go to hell because of works. People go, people go to hell because they have denied who Jesus Christ is. Come on. Denying Jesus is the, is the, is the one-way ticket to hell. Yeah, yeah. Failing to trust who Jesus is and believing who Christ is, that's what makes people go to hell. And people should never go to church because they are afraid of going to hell. Because, I mean, I guess that's why a lot of young people wouldn't come to church, right? I mean, they like, you know, if, if, God, if God is going to send me to hell because of the bad things I did, I, you know, and I kind of enjoy doing these bad things, I might as well just continue with my bad things, you know, and... It's like what you were talking on mm. earlier, right? mm. your, body, you lose, you, your body is here, but your heart is not there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but first, sometimes your, your body might be here for your heart to be here. For your heart to be here. Follow up. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the verse, Pastor, that the, what God says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. Fear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. fear is not of God. Yeah. God says, see, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, mm. and a sound mind. Mm. See, the moment there is fear, there is no productivity. There is no sanity there is no you know you can't be effective when you're afraid yeah there's what is known as the fear of god mm. the fear of god is not the terror of god it's not being intimidated of god the fear of god is the reverence of god like you revere god you honor god mm. you know like I, I tell people about god because i honor god mm. you know it's because of the fear i have of not because i'm afraid that he's going to Give me a hiding. He's not a he's not a head school. He's not a school headmaster. You know, with a big stick about to spank you for every small little thing that you may have done. He's not like that. That's not God. And and people have 
have a poor image of who God is, especially when you call when you call him father, isn't it? Because when people think of their daddies, <laughs> their daddies, some of them are not the best of daddies, you know, you know, and they think, oh, so if the father in heaven is like that, and my father on earth is like this, and then they begin to compare the two, and they think, no, this is how fathers function, and this is how fathers operate, and then they think that's what the father in heaven is like, but no, it's not like that. You see, the God in heaven is so interesting because he calls a man like Abraham his friend. Abraham is referred to as a friend of God. God. <laughs> and that's how God wants to relate with each and every one of us. He's a, he's, he's a father, he's a daddy, but at the same time, he wants you to relate to him as a friend. Are you afraid of your friend? <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I'm terrified. My friend is coming. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, the moment you're afraid, you, got, you just got to know that the Spirit of God is not there. Because the Bible tells us that where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. You've got to be free in the presence of God. Like there's some people that when they come to a church and, and the people are clapping hands and they're jumping, they're enjoying themselves. And you know, they, and, you know, they're used to a place where everybody is pious and you know, they're reverencing God. You know, as far as they're concerned, you have to be pious to, to reverence and honor God. You know, but that's not how it's meant to be. Because God actually says, make you know, you've got... Noise. Have a joyful Make a joyful yeah. noise. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, be excited. So, never, never, never fear God in the sense of terror of God. But fear God in the sense of reverencing God, honoring God. Yeah. So the Bible records and it says in the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 it says those that feared God guess what they did they spoke oftenly one to another and the Lord hearkened and had it and their names were written in the book of remembrance those who feared God guess what they did they didn't hide under the bush they didn't go into the cave you know they didn't hide away from him but rather they spoke about him and speaking about him, guess what that does? It makes God curious and wants to hear what are you guys talking about. So those that feared God made sure that God was in their presence continually, such that he may hear what they are saying about him. So those who fear God, guess what they do? They talk about him. So if you really, really fear God, it's, it's seen in you talking about him. Like being in that being in that place where everybody else is doing all nonsensical things and you're the only person talking about God. Why? Because you fear God. You know, like we live in a world where people are proud of doing things that are disgusting. Disgusting things and yet they are proud of them and they talk about them and they want everybody to know about the disgusting things that they have done and they are probably telling you about the disgusting things that they have done. And guess what? That's where now you, because you fear God, you begin to talk about God. In as much as they are boldly telling you about their disgusting things, you boldly tell them about God. It's, it's interesting because we live in a time where talking about God has now become the shameful thing. And then the disgusting things become the most beautiful things that anyone could ever talk about. You know, there's been a reverse, but it has to be flipped. Us who are Christians have to then stand and make sure that we defend the faith and talk about God. Let's defend the faith and talk about God. That's the fear of God. That's the fear of God. So yeah, that was the second level of, uh, of prayer where your heart is fixated on Jesus. Your heart is fixated on God. And you're not worried about anything. You're not scared. You know that God is taking care of every one of your needs. And then the third level of prayer, which is the highest level of prayer. Um, in this level of prayer, the soul finds it hard to turn away from God. You see, in this level of prayer, you can't turn away from God. The soul just can't do it. You know, the body may be wanting to turn away from God, but the soul can't turn away from God. That's the highest level of prayer. So in the, in the book titled The Kneeling Christian, um, may God teach us 
so that uh, so that we attach ourselves to the Lord that we find ourselves we find it hard to turn away from God may the Lord teach us so that we attach ourselves to our, to the Lord that we find it hard for us to turn away from God when you read in Romans chapter 8 verse 35 it says who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or uh, distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the soul what is it that will separate us from the love of God you know it's just highlighting all the negative things <laughs> that can happen in, a, in, a, in an individual's life and it's saying, can any of these things separate us from the love of God? And the truth is, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And this is because we would have arrived at that level, would have arrived at that level of prayer where nothing can separate us from the love of God. So what I did last week, I then, I then shared a testimony, uh, which is what I then also did with the people that I was ministering to in Acadia. And the testimony is about when I was 20 years old, which is 10 years ago. I, I got to a place where I nearly walked away from God. I've shared this testimony before. Where I nearly walked away from God. I told God, you go your way and I go my way. You do you and I do me. Because it doesn't look like you are concerned about my life. You know, I, I was an ambitious young man. I had dreams, I had goals, I had, I had things that I wanted to do. Do you know, I literally, I know we became millionaires, we, we became uh, quintillionaires in Zim dollars. But at the age of 18, I had an idea on how to become a millionaire in US dollars. I mean, that was just how crazy I was. You know, I used, I, if you'd come to my house, there were a big box full of papers, calculations on how to become a millionaire at the age of 18. I was just crazy like that. And that was like in, in US dollars. But everything I would try and do, none of it would succeed. None of it would succeed. See, I would try hard to do stuff, but none of it would succeed. I would work hard, but none of it is succeeding. So now I got really pissed off, mad and angry at God. To say, God, after everything that I'm doing, and also, I would, I would do it, but I would not do it for, it won't be for me, it will be for him. You understand? I'm like, God, how to be a millionaire for you? You see, when I'm a millionaire, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to sponsor the gospel. I'm going to make sure that the preachers, the preachers will, will fly wherever they have to fly, and you know, and... And the preachers will have to stay, will stay wherever they have to stay. And, you know, I'll take care of the work of the kingdom. Like, literally, I was doing it for the sake of the gospel. I wanted to become a millionaire for the sake of the gospel. But then at the same time, in as much as I wanted to become a millionaire for the sake of the gospel, I also, I probably had the hidden agendas. Why was I getting angry if God wasn't blessing me? But anyway, maybe I was just young. So I, I would get angry. I'd get mad at God because I am not experiencing this, this blessing of God. So yeah, I was pissed off, angry, mad. And what would also happen during that particular time, I would pray for people and I would see miracles happen in their lives. I would see their lives change. I would see things happen in their lives. And yet there was nothing happening in my own life. Like I'm the one praying for these people, God. You know, why, why not bless me equally as you are blessing them? You know, like, I went to there, I went to his house, he was sick, I prayed for him, and you healed him. I see you there, I see you doing all these miracles, but it doesn't look like you're doing anything for me. So I was angry, I was mad at God, because I was not experiencing God in my own life, as I was experiencing him in other people's lives. So, so yeah, I was angry, so I told God, you go your way, and I go my way. You do you, and I do me. I was justified for doing that. Because God did not care about me. So there I was. I told him to go his way. But God being God, he can't go anywhere. <laughs> because he is everywhere. <laughs> so there is no way that God would have left me. Because if he would have left me, I would have died. You know what I mean? You know, I, I can't exist without God. But I was just young, so I didn't know. 
So there I was, I told him to go his way, but he was just there. He, he remained there. I walked away, but wherever I would go, he would be there. So there I was. Uh, it was on a Wednesday. It was about to be evening. During that time, I was visiting a local church in my community because I couldn't afford to go to his presence ministries. It was in church. It was in town. So I decided that I would visit a local church. So as I was walking, I decided, I made a decision, I said, there's a possibility that someone might come to my house. Someone might come to pick me up for church. Though no one would ever come to my house to pick me up for church born again. Then I was like, okay, that's fine. If the pastor does the altar call, I will, I will go. If the pastor does the altar call, I will go. And it was as though he had agreed to my condition, but he didn't agree to the condition. <laughs> He's God. He makes his own choices, you know. So when then the lady, when the pastor was done preaching, she didn't do the oracle, some lady went up. And when this lady went up, she got there and she started speaking and went, and this is what she then said. She was like, there's somebody that is in this place who is not sure whether he or she is born again. And then I say to myself, well, that ain't the pastor. <laughs> we had an agreement as though God had agreed. That ain't the pastor. So. The lady, the lady then says it again. There's somebody that is in this place who is not sure whether he or she is born again. And when she says it for the second time, in my first time Christian walk, my heart beats for an autocall. For the first time, my heart started beating really fast for the autocall. And as my heart was beating for the autocall, uh, before I realized it, uh, this lady says, I can hear your heart beating right now. I can feel your heart beating right now. Then I was, before I realized that I was on my feet and I'm standing right in front of the church and I was the only person standing in front of that church. We simply meant that auto call was specifically just for me. And I, I rededicated my life into the hands of God. And when I did that from that day up to today, I've experienced the peace of God that surpasses human understanding. Like, see, when I, when I tell you that I'm not worried about anything, that's where it comes from. That's where it emanates from. Because previously, when I was 20, I was worried. <laughs> and now, 10 years later, I'm not even worried. But when I was 20, I was worried. What is my financial situation going to be like? You know, I was so concerned. Because I'm, I'm like from a terribly poor family. And, you know, you know, you get worried about money things. But all of a sudden, there was a peace that, come, that came on me, and I've never been worried ever since. It's more like what I literally did that day is I gave my life to God, and I took the life that was His. And when I walked away from that, when I walked away from that altar, I no longer had that life which I had previously, a life full of worry, a life full of concerns. I now had the life of Christ. It's more like when you read the scripture, the, the Bible tells us that all ye that are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. And that's what happened on that day when I gave my life to Jesus. I literally experienced scripture. Scripture became my life. See, there are things that I had been preaching about. There are things that I had been ministering to people about. But they were not things that I had experienced personally. <laughs> See, there are things that I would tell people about but they were not personal experiences. Because obviously the, the people that the people that I would minister to, I think it was hard for me to actually, though I was about to backslide, but it wasn't gonna be good for me to backslide. Because guess what? What would happen to all those people I had ministered to? What had happened to all those people that I had preached to? You know what the, you know what the scripture says? The scripture says, strike uh, the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So, whatever, whatever comes from me is not necessarily coming from me. It's coming from the people that I lead. The people that I would have ministered to. So, the, if there's anybody that should have peace, it's the minister himself. <laughs> because if the minister does not have peace, <laughs> the people that he leads will not have peace. So, I was so excited. I gave my, I, I then gave, I, I got so excited after, after, after handing the life back to Jesus and from there I began to live for Christ and from there I slowly began to realize like no 
The reason why I would visit people and I would see miracles in their lives is because these are the things that God has called me to do. He has called me to minister His Word. He has called me to show, to share the light of Christ with the nations. You know, I got to realize that these are the things that God wanted me to do. Amen. Those things that God wanted me to do. If I had become a millionaire, I would never have become a preacher. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I would have been busy running, running with my own projects, <laughs> which have nothing to do with God. And as much as I would give a lot of money to the church, but it would not be the thing that God would have created me to do. And I would be one of those people who would stand at the gate of heaven. <laughs> and then Jesus Christ says, get away from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And then I'll say, but God, I used to give huge offerings at church. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I gave all my money to the work, to the work of the kingdom. You know, but he would tell me, no. I never knew you. And the reason why he would say he never knew me, because I would not have done the things that God would have created me to do. You can do wonderful things, but if you don't do the things that God has created you to do, Jesus doesn't know you. So if there's anything that should happen as a hunger, should be generated on the inside of us, to say, God, what is that thing that you want me to do? What is that thing that you want me to do? I know I am a life for a reason. I am a life for a cause. I'm not here by reason of divine cosmic accident. I am here because you have allowed me to be here. And there is a thing that you want to do through me. You know, you submit your life into, into his hands and say, Lord, have your way. Have your way in my life. And that's exactly what I did. I gave my life completely to Jesus. And I've never been worried ever since then. I had no idea how my life was going to roll out. I just placed it all in his hands and said, Lord, do as you will. Do with me as you will. That which you want to do, do with me. How do you know that God wants you to do this? There's that scripture, which I love so much. Uh, Romans, Romans 1, verse 16 and 17. I love it for the, for the fact that it actually answers your question. See, scripture records there and it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. So the word translated righteousness is from the Greek word dekaios. And what it actually speaks about, it speaks of a person whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting are entirely conformed to the will of God. The only way you're going to know the thing that God has created you to do is when, you are, is when you have submitted your will completely to Him. And the first thing you have to do is just don't be ashamed of the gospel. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a preacher. <laughs> you get it. But what you do is you just go around telling people about Christ. And as you do that, your eyes of understanding will be opened. The only way your eyes of understanding are ever going to be opened is when you're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's more like you are being, it's, it's the principle of being faithful in little things and then God entrusting you with much. You understand? The only way you're going to unlock the purpose of God over your life is when you're faithful in the small little things. And what is the small little thing? The small little thing is go out and tell someone about Jesus. Doesn't make you a preacher, doesn't make you a pastor, doesn't make you a bishop. It just makes you a believer who's on a quest of discovering himself. And as you talk about God, the more you talk about him, the more you get to realize who you are in him. You open your eyes as you talk about him. Be faithful in small little things and he will entrust you with much. The much is the purpose, the reason why you're here. But that is only revealed when you're faithful in the small little things. The right thing, you're on the right path and God is, is not going to give you the full picture of what he wants you to do mm -hmm. because if he does, you're going to run away. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to look at it and you say, this is too big, I can't do it, God. <laughs> So he will never give you the full picture at once. Yeah. He will never give you the full picture at once. Like when I, when, when, when I was doing, when I was, because I did start doing home visits when I came to Acadia. There are things that I did when I was in Fogos, a long time ago, you know. And I didn't do them because I was a pastor. I did them because I was just a believer, you know. And, and slowly, uh, it has led me here. I was just being faithful in small little things. Amen. 
So I had promised that I was going to have a different message for today, but I'm surprised. The recap took more than 40 minutes. What kind of a recap is that? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's what we had. And I pray that it ministered to somebody to say that there are three levels of prayer and desire to, desire to function and operate in the third level of prayer. Where, where, you, where you know for a fact that you are never going to turn away from God regardless of what happens in your life. Because life is going to happen. Things are going to happen in your life. But you need to have that confidence that right in the middle of whatever that is happening in your life, God is right there with you. And just seek His face. Seek His face continually. And pray to Him continually. Because God is, God is faithful. Never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Never went to preschool, dropped out of high school, not because I wanted to. Yeah. I can't believe this, suddenly I'm not with no creation. All I ever did is pass the way to spot my transgressions. Silver and gold.